Hey everybody, welcome back to Hard for Games. I'm your host, Tony, and today we're talking about an update for Chris Cube's Zelda Alpha Room slash Alpha Area Restoration Project. Now I'm pretty excited because a lot of these Zelda projects, these hacks, these mods, don't often get update videos. They're kind of like flares or fireworks. They shoot up into the night sky, really bright and beautiful, and then they kind of fizzle away into memory. So not only do I have updates for you, but just like last time, everything or nearly everything I'm gonna show you today, you can actually play right now. I'm gonna go ahead and put some links to his channel in the description below and the card above, and that's gonna have some more information over on his side of things. Now, this video is going to assume that you've seen the first one where I go into a little bit more detail and depth regarding what each room is and what it, well, what it could have been in Zelda 64. Go ahead and watch that one right now if you haven't already. Uh, I'm gonna go into some detail in this video, but just not as much. So when we started up here, you can see Zelda 64, not Ocarina of Time. Now keep in mind that the whole idea of this is recreating rooms and areas from the earliest build of the game, at least the earliest build that was shown off, right? And back then, wasn't known as Ocarina of Time. It didn't have its full final title. It was just referred to as Zelda 64. And a very nice touch here when you enter the buttons to go into the room select, he has replaced the normal debug room select with his rooms that he's been working on. So very easy peasy, just go ahead and select in English the room you want. So let's start off with something that is completely new, or rather what is old is new again. He's calling this the Sky Tower. And of course it is an area that was shown off in very early screenshots and an early trailer. We don't really know from the context of what Nintendo showed us what this area would have been. Color-wise, it looks very similar to the Stalfos rooms where Link is, you know, fighting, whacking away at the Stalfos, but we don't really know. But while we're here, let's go ahead and poke around and take a look at some of the other touches that he put into this particular mod. Now you might have noticed that Link is a different color. Well, again, it's based off an earlier tunic. And in addition to Link being a different color, his shield is also a much earlier version with a simplified design. You may have also noticed that the HUD is changed from its retail setup. Here's the retail version, here's the alpha version. And it's harder to tell from just you watching me, but the A and B button have been switched, just like in the earlier builds. It actually kind of takes a minute to get used to it, but it's not really too hard. You just kind of do your best to remember. Notice the ocarina also has medallions in it. And when you go into the main menu, the medallions are equipable as our magic. In the menu, there's a couple different things going on. First off, some of the items look a little bit different, at least the icons do. So for example, the Megaton Hammer looks different, as does the Slingshot. Now we already mentioned the medallions, but you may not have noticed that the menu layout for where the medallions lay is also different. Here's an early screenshot of what the original, or at least one of the earlier menus actually looked like. Notice how everything's a little bit more connected than in the final version. Again, here's the early version, here's the final version, and here's what Chris Cube has created. Another neat thing here is that the Begoran Sword, or the Longer Sword, is equipable to down C in this case. And as you can see here in these early trailers, it was the same sort of situation. You could equip it to the C buttons. Similar to in Majora's Mask, you could get the Great Fairy Sword and utilize it in that manner via the C buttons. Es la obra maestra del genio de Nintendo, Miyamoto. Let's move on to an area that we've showcased before and see how it's improved. This is the mountain area. It is the first example and the first instance where we saw the front flipping attack, which is an alpha or beta attack that I've re-enabled via codes. 
Now this area has definitely improved. Before, this was just a ledge that you couldn't actually get onto without levitating onto. He's actually built up a little ramp so you can walk up to it without any levitation codes, which of course is good. Uh, it no longer has those weird white like lines and spaces in between the textures, which so it just looks a lot cleaner here. And of course, some enemies. And wouldn't you know it, Navi lights up red with the enemies just like she used to. Now here's Castletown. Remember the earliest version was totally polygonal. Big, spacious, kind of empty as well. It wasn't that blurry, pre-rendered mess of an image that we ultimately ended up getting. Not too much is different here. There's definitely some better texture work, sort of giving the appearance of shadows and depth in the buildings. He also added some soldiers. Uh, there's a nice little crowd of people over here. Oh, Jesus. Now, here's actually a second version of Castletown made by my good friend Melon Speedruns. Now, if you don't remember, Melon was one of those individuals that helped me debunk that fake Zelda, Wind Waker, Beta, and our disc. I should mention that he has been instrumental in helping out Chris Cube with the second version of this restoration. Also, 26.5, formerly 2787, who I think should probably just pick a couple digits and stick with it, uh, but regardless, has been helping out since the beginning and has been rocking out as well. So Melons has a bit more going on. As you can see, textures are a bit nicer, a bit busier. Here you can see that there are multiple exits. But overall, it's pretty similar. Now let's go ahead and move on to a new area we haven't seen before in this project. It's the slime room, inspired by this room here. I'm not 100% sure where this room would have been in the actual game. Probably some sort of Death Mountain or fire-inspired level, just based on the coloring. <laughs> So hey, that's the episode for today. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Appreciate you subscribing, ringing that bell, supporting us on Patreon, all that good stuff. Really do sincerely appreciate it. And a big thank you to Chris Cube of Melon Speedruns and 26.5 for kicking out this awesome project. I'm excited for version 3.0. Again, links in the description below if you want to check out Chris Cube's channel and take a look at how you can actually play this. Aside from that, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you again, everybody, for watching. If you want to see more Hard for Games and see more Zelda content, we have a ton of that on our channel. Go ahead and click the videos above for some Zelda beta questing and some Zelda hacks and mods.